the girls say. Daily. All the boys say. Solutions. All the girls say. Daily. All the boys say. Solutions. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Graham. And Ashcon. And today's question is... I have a bunch of water drops that keep forming on the top of my float tank. What should I do to stop that? Bummer. Yeah, <laughs> no, bummer, super man. bummer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just sell the business, I yeah, guess. It sounds out. like, yeah, it's, it's an omen. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, this is really common. This yeah. is like a no. I mean, these things are giant humidity generating <laughs> machines. So it's not the most surprising thing in the world. That yeah. It's forming on the ceiling there. Yeah, it happens. Uh, and so, the, the, so the problem with this, too, we should say, is not that it's on the ceiling. It's that mid-float, you'll get these water droplets that come down. It's yeah. like some weird water torture where you don't know how often <laughs> and like what part of your body it'll hit. But you'll yep, kind of just get these drops black. that once every 20 minutes come down and disrupt your float. It's pretty horrible. Like Once <laughs> it happens, you're like, you just can't relax anymore. Yep. So what causes it? What causes this condensation? What's the condensation cause? I mean, again, it's giant humidity. <laughs> it's a pool of water that's kept at okay. 94 well, and a half degrees. Here's what I'm getting at, is that usually the condensation is is either existent or especially pronounced when there's a big temperature difference between the inside of the float tank and the outside of the float tank. Mm, mm-hmm. mm. So, Like a soda can. Like a soda can <laughs> or like anything that forms condensation. <laughs> like any object <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Um, so, and, and, you know, float, various float tanks have things to try to prevent this too, from the way the ceilings are, are sloped to radiant heaters inside the, inside the ceilings, like the Samadhi tanks have, and I think some other float tanks might have that Mm -hmm. to, uh, a lot of float tanks, if they don't have that, will put a lot of insulation up at the top, things like that to, to all cut down on this problem. But still, if you do have a like pretty serious temperature difference between the outside and the inside, which you know usually means colder on the outside, warmer on the inside. You're going to get that condensation. I mean, always means that. Otherwise, the condensation would be on the reversed. Other side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, when you have this situation, that's that's where it comes. So there's there's like I think two big things to help deal with it. One is like humidity control, right? Like the that's part of it is making sure that you're trying to keep the the area not extremely humid. Yep. And even like a little bit of airflow getting into the tank, you know, hopefully not enough to disrupt the float or even be felt by the person on the inside. But uh, just any kind of circulating air towards the top will also work to eliminate some of that condensation, which is nice. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, probably the biggest thing that's going to help is keeping the room that your float tank is in warmer. Mm-hmm. Like actually, you know, it, whatever heating system you have to, to heat the room, like you might want to consider bumping it up a little bit and, and trying to equal out that, that temperature. Um, it also sometimes depends on time of year. Yeah. So uh, That's what we you find know, again with place. the with the temperature differential, winter tends to be the worst time for uh, condensation gathering on the float tanks and causing issues. And you know, even with kind of getting this ideal, um, you know, at least with uh, floater comfort plus stopping condensation into your air temperature down, we still have issues with that flow forming in some yeah. bar rooms and. The solution we have right now is actually just checking the ceiling in between every person and having uh, basically like a... a Stick with a... (laughs) Rag on it. We just (laughs) clean our tanks with a stick on a rag rag on a stick. Um, One of those like almost like a Swiffer shaped sort of thing. Yeah, we do that. We we use a a telescoping pole (laughs) and kind of go in there and and get the humidity off the ceilings of the the cabins just in between in between people. I was just talking to one of uh, one of our staff yesterday and they were saying they found they have to do that between every single every single float right now for one of our rooms. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, there's there's definitely a certain, like, mystery to it, too. Like, what do you mean when we have identical tanks and one room yeah. has a bunch of water yeah, they're the forming same temperature? and one doesn't? Yeah, like, sometimes yeah. I'm just like, okay, there's something going on We here. call those, in, in the business, we call those float mysteries. Get uh, <laughs> get used to them is my best <laughs> advice for those. So, yeah, this, this whole conversation has sounded very logical up to this point. But <laughs> <laughs> in reality, sometimes you're still scratching your head. But, yeah, w- wiping it off, and, and I have... I haven't really found it to be, even in that worst case scenario, if you're wiping it between every float, it usually seems to do the job for the course of that float. Yeah, of having it so the drops aren't falling on people. Yeah, yeah which, is, float, which is nice. Sure. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind. So one is uh, this idea of using like a bubble wrap type cover right. for your float tanks. And oftentimes we'll find the most condensation seems to gather when people aren't using the float tank. 
um, especially if you're leaving the door uh, closed to it to keep in the temperature, right? So you want to keep the water temperature warm, so you close the door to the float tank. You didn't have a floater in there that session. Next person goes in and opens it up, and it's just drip city, right? Yeah, why? Why? Well, because you've created this contained environment where, I don't know, something about humans. But what does and... the person in there have to... <laughs> why would the person change? Float mystery. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't even try to worry about it, my friend. It's true, like it's true. It matches with experience, but I don't I don't understand. So, so one thing is to leave the door to the tank open so that doesn't happen. You uh-huh. get the airflow going in, but then the water in the tank will get cool which is where you have this combo of door open, perhaps, some kind of bubble wrap cover in the tank to stop heat from going up. And they make, it's it's kind of like a light pool cover, I guess. We call it bubble wrap because it has a bunch of bubbles on it, but we're not just like, <laughs> we're not just like right, don't, saving don't the bubble wrap scraps bubble wrap from our packaging. Yeah, yeah, much, much more official than that, I promise you. <laughs> They're usually like blue, kind of like thick plastic. Like, yeah, I mean, you're looking up a pool cover. Very serious. It's, it's, it's very commercial professional and professional. Business. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, so anyway, that's so that's one of the tricks for at least when you have an empty tank in between some clients, uh, both keeping the water warm and stopping that massive amount of humidity from gathering on the on the ceiling. Yeah, and then that you know it's just rag stick. <laughs> um, you can there you know uh, on some tanks depending on the construction of the fiberglass, you could also retrofit it with a heater on the ceiling if it didn't come with a radiant heater. Yeah, that's true. Um, not not possible in all tanks. You know, if it's double-shelled fiberglass, it's going to be really hard to do any kind of retrofitting or anything like that. But um, in, in a lot of the units, it is actually possible to go back and put a radiant heater actually on top of the float tank, which, like Ashkan mentioned before, is how um, Samadhi and a few other tanks control the, the drips on the inside there is actually having a heater that'll heat the ceiling enough that it just kind of evaporates that water, stops it from forming, which is kind of like the most surefire way to... To right. stop this from forming, other than stick rag, which obviously is, <laughs> like the, without saying, the best solution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or, or more insulation is a nice, like, easy step, you know? Mm-hmm. Let's see if that works. So, good luck. Good luck with the drop set there on your ceiling. And, uh, again, you know, even if you have to wipe it in between every person, the most important thing is just, even if there's humidity forming, try to make sure it's not falling on your customers. <laughs> That's where it starts to, to cause trouble. <laughs> Okay, if you guys have more questions for us, go over to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast and just type them right into there. Yep, those will go straight into our trash folder and we'll make up our own <laughs> questions from there. So, <laughs> All right, talk to you all tomorrow. Right.